Hey there guys, it's Chaos back again. So today I'm going to bring us a video of some of my matches. So what I'm going to start doing is um, I'm going to pre-screen some of my matches that I play and for the interesting ones I'll go ahead and do a video of them. Um, once again this is just to explain my deck and how it flows and things like that. Um, you guys saw my deck um, from the last video and if you haven't checked that out first. Um, but today we're going to take a look at this particular person. I can't pronounce this obviously, is a different language. and their deck power is pretty similar to mine, although deck power at rank 1 is not that big of a determining factor. Um, but I would say that, yeah, if you're not in the 3Ks, it's a little bit hard to win because just the power of the cards that you're dealing uh, or facing against. So we got a unified color deck here, which um, is pretty strong. I mean, it played in the correct hands. And some decks could be really deadly. Um, and the items that they have aren't bad either. So they got Molten Bowl, which is one of the craziest items uh in the game they got the new armor um that does six points of protection with the uh, physical resist um that's typically really hard to get rid of um and they got like yeah quite a few items on here that are pretty interesting and in shoot command which i don't have so um in a deck like this where all of these items are utilized and usable on their um, particular monsters it's going to be pretty hard to overcome so let's go take a look at how i play this deck now keep in mind my deck is a skip turn one deck most of the time it's almost advisable not to go turn one um but there are times where i do and we'll go take a look at a few of those games but this is game one and we'll go through this in steps now what i'll try to do is pause it in some spots and explain the thought process so i'm going second this is good we'll go ahead and let them drop to something to see what we could play against right so with this in my starting hand, you can take a look here. It's always nice to see Void Element because this gets your tempo, this gets your ramping up. And if they're not sacking anything, even better because they're playing a very slow burn deck. Um, when you burn really quickly, that means you're going to get the superior numbers, you're going to get the quality on the board. And if they do not start the sack, they have lost the game. So this is, this is the way the game works. If they're not sacking cards, you got a huge advantage already. So this is what I do. Every time that you see Void Element on turn one, you don't have to think. So they sack a card. So they do sack a card. So I sack Void Element. Now, what I did there was I skipped turn one. But look at what I lost. I lost Blue Dragon. And a lot of people might think, man, that's a staple in a deck. Especially my Blue Dragon's max level right now. So I spent a lot upgrading that thing. Um, but it's... Here, here's what the thought process is behind that, right? So I sacked them. I got six um, out right now. I could have dropped Banner Parrot. Um, and then since this came out after that, I could have dropped this on it, right? And then this could have been tanking something. And I would have one uh, crystal left. But I would have done four plus three damage. It would have been seven. So I wouldn't have killed it. And the good chance this guy does a retaliation and actually hit him back. Um, so what's the point of dropping something that I can't get rid of what they have out on the board? And I'm setting myself up to get hit. So I'd rather lose a full-blown blue dragon that I did not spend five crystals on and go with whatever it is that, you know, they want to do on the next turn. So now they have their elixir and uh, they gone ahead and uh, sack. And this is cardinal sin of playing this game. I have nothing for you to hit. What are you doing dropping three naked monsters and you have armor sitting right up here? The smart play would have been... To maybe just armor up, um, what is this, Lizard? Um, just armor him up and then see if I could kill 8 damage worth of Thorns and Retaliation. I would not have dropped these two guys because now you're just putting them out there for me to hit. It's like, you're not intimidating anybody if there's nothing on the board, right? So this is a very bad play in a very high ranked game. So now they don't have any reserves. So whatever I kill, I mean, they're not going to make it back. So of course, you see Void Element, sack them. Look at that, 12 crystals. And I got Goblin Bomber. And the reason why I put Goblin Bomber out first is because Banner Parrot is essential. If I draw Falcon Rider on this draw here, I could still drop them. And then I know the next card will be a tank because I do not have any more cards that are not tanks in this deck. I already got rid of my two Void Elements. And I already got rid of one range. And if another range comes up, I could drop that as well. Or Banner Parrot. And the next card will be a tank. And the tanks could be Acolyte for three. It could be Chaos Dragon for four. And it could be um, Blue Dragon for five. Now, I already sacked this turn. So the max I could play right now is going to be the five card. So any card that comes up after dropping Banner Parrot 
I will be able to play. So let's see what comes up. So I draw Banner Parrot like I was saying. And Banner Parrot always plays after Goblin. Because Goblin could actually sit in the one spot and hit things. So Banner Parrot is probably the least likely to be in spot one for me by choice. If anything, this is the last card in my deck that I would place in spot one. So it is always going to sit as close to spot three as possible. So look at that. So I got chaos dragon from the draw and i got to drop them so now i have my tank and support combo right from all the the crystals that i was saving now i still have two crystals left i already sacked this turn so i can't sack these cards these cards are useless in my hand now these cards are the only three cost cards in my deck along with um the fighting gloves so chances of me drawing a two cost card on the next draw is huge so now i can't do anything else so let's see what progresses from here So I got a really lucky roll uh, with that. So basically what that turn had given me was a safe from death. Uh, because I got a 3 damage from here and a 4 from here. Now it would have took Falcon Rider down to uh, 2 points. Um, and then this guy would have 2 points, right? So if either one of these guys would have rolled a 2 on either side, it would have killed something. Um, so the chances are what it killed some stuff. And if I would have like had them live... Then yeah, my goblin rider would have died, and that would have been horrible. Um, but sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some, right? So those are the rolls that you get with chaos damage. And so this is where you know chaos dragon could have hit this, and I would have been in like a super good position. But because it hit in the middle, um, banner pair got to stay alive, and it will do some damage to me next turn. So they're sacking. This guy knows what he's doing. He's sacking cards. He's now the one mistake that he has made here. This should have been put on Banner Parrot because you do not get double uh, morale um, if you have them on two separate sources. By buffing this to a plus three, um, this would have been a five. This would have been a five. I would have lost Goblin, and this would have been down to one health. Um, I think that's a mistake by not killing um, at least Goblin to force me to play something on my next turn and force me to use my crystals. So I don't like this play. I know the reason why they did is because this guy's going to stay alive longer than Banner Parrot. But when you have a chance to kill something, you do it. That's as simple as that. There's no ifs and buts about that. So that turn completely turned around on him. Because now I have full damage coming right back at him. And all of these guys are armorless. So you could already tell this guy's dead. You could already tell this guy's going to be in a world of hurt. Um, and then I got Chaos Dragon that would randomly hit something. right? So check this out. So I sack a card that I can't play, right? I'm not going to play Obsidian Spears. Useless, and I do not want to trigger this. So why would I play that? So I sacked it. I put the um, Armor of Darkness on my Chaos Dragon because once you put this on a tank with flying in the front, you've just bought yourself a hell of a lot of turns. Um, and then now I have this protecting my Banner Parrot because, like I said, Banner Parrot to me is pretty important. By not being able to kill it, I just supported or secured myself on the next round to play Falcon Rider when Goblin dies eventually, and I will still have the buff. So protecting um, Banner Parrot is essential, um, and basically with this, I got a pretty good setup, and I felt to myself, or I talked to myself, um, thinking, if I lose Goblin, I lose Goblin, but these two are way more important right now, so I protected them. That's the thought process, but look at this turn. So that's a board clear. Obviously, you cannot plan for that with chaos damage. But once again, needing a two out of five is not much to ask for. Um, basically, to kill you know either one of these guys on the side, right? The six is a little bit absurd, but this is the beauty of chaos dragon. I I said in my deck video that chaos dragon is really undervalued because this guy has no melee damage. The tank that they put out, um, I think the guy was named Lizard. Um, so the tank that they put out has a counter to things I hit it with melee. It never triggered because I used Chaos Dragon. And Chaos Dragon helps in this scenario because remember my deck is based on killing spots two and three. I do not care if Chaos Dragon doesn't hit spot one because I don't care about that spot. It, it's rare that I meet something that would be able to kill Chaos Dragon. Um, and if it does kill Chaos Dragon, well I got a blue dragon, you know, usually in my games that I could put out here. 
um, and I can still tank. Um, but if this guy hits either of the sides, it usually gets rid of the things on the sides along with the help of these guys. So this is such a good tank. I mean, it is such a good card. Whatever they put in the middle just gets completely either ignored or trashed. And you'll see as we're coming up. So now it's his turn again. So this guy's sacking a whole bunch of stuff. And fortunately for them, their chaos damage triggered on the one place where it benefits them the most. Um, and then they put um, the shield on the lobster, but guess what? I mean, this bypasses the lobster's defense, so check this out. Ah. So they get a good roll, and they took out my armor of darkness, right? But the armor of darkness doesn't really proc anyway, so now the thought process is what I do from here, right? And the answer is pretty simple. I would do Falcon Rider in spot two. I would put armor back on my tank, and then we go from there. And I would not have to do any sacking or anything like that. The game now just plays itself. So I don't know if that was lucky or bad. Um, so basically with them having the cloak here, right, you cannot attack them. So these two guys here would have to go ahead and break the armor um, of Lobster. And my six damage, if it would have hit here, would have been beautiful, right? So I mean, I'm not going to complain with a six damage, but it hit this guy. And these guys won't be able to finish them off unless I get another lucky roll. Um, and now if they keep having more armor, this is going to continue for a bit. But like I said, magic detonates like right there waiting, waiting and waiting. So we'll see what happens next. So this is a deadly combo. Um, this guy here is so amazing because, I mean, they could one shot uh, basically anything with six damage like right off the bat, right? And it has a ton of health. So that was a really good play for them to kind of take away some of my buffness. Um, and then you also have um, three monsters to my three, right? And it just really depends on what I have as a last card. And they already know that I lost Blue Dragon, so chances are it's not going to be something huge. So Blue Dragon or Chaos Dragon tank all day. Now, this play is important. Um, Falcon Rider, for me, almost always sit in this spot. And the reason why that is is because falcon rider in the case that i lose my last tank is a flying creature so things like lobster might miss against falcon rider so if it ever gets to a point where it does trickle into the spot one um it will always play in front of banner parrot and you guys already heard me earlier saying that banner parrot always needs to be as close to three as possible but in this scenario it's different and the reason why that is because if you look at the math here right it's really easy you got 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 2 is 7. That kills this guy because magic directly hits across and then the, um, the archery or the range will hit direct uh, or diagonally across. So in this instance, this is where I break my own rule and I will put Acolyte here and then kill this guy with these two attacks. And then now I have free reign to kind of do whatever I want with the rest of this. Now, I think what Chaos Dragon did there was the best scenario. I really do not need the randomness there to kind of help them anymore. Yeah, and this is the last item, last monster, so I get rid of this armor. It's completely game over, so we'll see. So, I mean, there's not much you can do, right? Lobster against one of my favorite tanks right now in the game, Chaos Dragon. So, that is one game. Um, I'm going to usually do these as one game at a time, and I got a few of these. Like I said, um, I, I've gone through and watched a few of these just to make sure I have some, some things to say. That's one game. I hope you got some sort of like the way the strategy works, how I think, how I work through the games, and, and what my strategies are. And um, We'll be doing these hopefully to get more and more polished. But yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again. Take care. Bye-bye.